Hey, this is Paul Martin, and you're in the hole. <laughs> All right. Always go on two or maybe even three. And just the snap count will confuse the defense. Uh, Paul, it's good good to be alive today. And uh, I'm just glad you could join me here on In the Huddle. Have you got a special message for these boys this week? I know you always open up with a, with a special message. Yeah, uh, this week we're, uh, we're going to uh, – uh, the Israelites, they're going down to uh, – to take down Jericho because Jericho was this paganistic, paganistic uh, uh, nation. Uh, they were worshiping God, uh, other gods besides the true God, Jesus Christ. So, uh, what, so what they uh, so so there's this these guys that brings their trumpets and uh, and then there's a whole army and uh, army of men. And uh, Jesus told them, He said, uh, for six days I want you to march around Jericho. One time each day, quietly. You're gonna do it quietly, and then on the seventh day, he told him. He said, he said, uh, you're gonna go marching around that city seven times today, and then they're gonna blow their trumpets. And when they blow their trumpets, you're gonna shout, and the walls are gonna come crumbling, crumbling down. So, uh, uh, the moral of this story is Friday night, we are going out there, and we're gonna we're gonna uh, break down the walls. Breaking down the walls of Jericho. So it'll be the Friday night, you're saying it's going to be the seventh night. Is that correct? Yeah, Friday night's the seventh night. So we're going to go, go out there and we're going to shout and we're going to holler and we're going to break down the bones, eagle walls. Bring the 13th man. Gordon's attorney Ford Field is now home of the 13th man. That's right. Uh, a lot like the stadium out in the Texas A&M, home of the 12th man. That's right. Let's see, we got, uh, we got the 12th, 12th man's man. head up underneath Tanner Billingsley's shirt. That's right, so we got so the 13th man. We got the 13th man here at uh, Tourney Ford Field. And, Paul, I noticed uh, on your, uh, you know, behind you there, if you look out back, uh, you got a real nice view of Tourney Ford Field there. That's that's awesome. Uh, I like this new setup. How you like it? I love it, man. Uh, uh, I'm actually sitting out here in the stadium, and uh, uh, it's it's nice out here. Got the 50 yard line right there over your right shoulder. I see the G faintly painted in, and of course the crowds, the stands are empty on the other side. But Friday night, they'll probably be packed. Uh, yeah, and that's what we like to see as fans. We like to see our, our, our stands packed and right. uh, uh, people coming out supporting the big blue. The only thing that that I don't like, which I guess it's a good thing, but the waffle the uh, what do you call them? The, uh, you, you get them at the fire, the funnel cakes, you know. They're on the other side of the field from where I stand, and it's a it's a long walk over there. And, uh, well, I love some of Miss Pope's funnel cakes. You know, I actually got to be one of the first people to ever sample her funnel cakes over there. And I went to that game stuff that night. I was hanging up a sign across the field, and she was over there practicing her funnel cakes. And, hey, it was a good day. Uh I got to taste test the good, the bad, which I don't think there was any bad ones. They just there were some that were better than others. But. Well, you know, I never was a big fan of funnel cakes, but I but I, I am in the mood for some of that gorgeful popcorn because we've been advertising it every hey, week. Bring, I ain't had none yet. You know, always <laughs> says bring you popcorn. Well, I'm ready for some of it because I ain't had none of it yet. So maybe maybe oh, I need to sample some of that old popcorn. What if we could get a popcorn machine right here in the studio? You need one right there behind you. I do, so I can advertise the popcorn and and, and, and tell you awesome. how good it is. That would be awesome. We'll have to do. We'll have to get a popcorn machine in here. Right. Uh, hey, baby, I know it's a long walk, but get over there and uh, support that band, man. That you know, go over and buy you a funnel cake Friday night, Paul. It's good stuff. Hamburgers. They got hamburgers, hot dogs, I think. It's good stuff. Candy bars, and all that money. You know, sometimes our band don't get the recognition they deserve. Hey, they they play. We need to get them playing. Uh, but all that money the, goes to the, the band, offense, correct? While our defense is on the field, the other team's offense, make it loud. Is know? that correct, though? All that money goes to the band? That, as far as I know, that money on, on that side of the field goes directly to the band. And, on her side of the field, right? No, or the on, other side. on the visitor side of the field. I mean, right. They used to have a sign up that said... Uh, and, you, and you know, it might not be all that It might not be all that crowded on the visitor side because last, uh, last time we was at a home game, last time we was at a home game, I didn't see nobody in there getting nothing, so, uh, well, so Paul, it's going to be too crowded. I have a good idea. I'll get you the Tiger Stripe Cowbell. 
<laughs> all right, and I want you to go across and stand on the visitor's side, and every time we do something good, you just ring the heck out of that bell. I better not do that. Bell You'll goes. get me shot. <laughs> no, there's no weapons. There's no weapons for fit the schools. Yeah, but you'll still get me in trouble. Oh, there's not going to fight it. break out I, if I do it when the big blue does something. I tell you what, if something happens, I'll send over reinforcements. <laughs> Maybe uh, Reno Bun and Uncle BS, <laughs> I'll send them guys over there. And, yeah, I know. might need some help. Uh, go over there and get some popcorn or a hamburger or something, get moved. Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, anyway, uh, let's, talk, let's talk about a little Monterey football. What was the score up there, Paul? You remember? It was uh, Gorsville Tigers 38, Monterey Wildcats 12. 38 to 12. Uh, hey, I thought we played a pretty good football game. What do you, what do you think? Yeah, uh... We uh we threw the ball well, we ran the ball well, and uh, guys up front done a good job blocking. Uh, of course, of course, we had a few penalties here and there, but uh, yeah, that we, we need to cut out. A... We need to cut out. But uh, all, other than that, good good offensive football. Hey, it was a dog fight. I mean, them, them kids were actually, you know, they're going at it. There is football. That's right. Uh, have at it, you know, and. Uh, you know, some of those penalties are avoidable. Some don't make sense. And they happen, but you got to take the good with the bad. And That's right. And move on. We, we did get out of there with a win, which was awesome. And uh, hey, our offense played great. Our little quarterback uh, ended up getting, I think, the DTC player of the game. I saw him interviewing him after the game, saw some pictures online. Congrats to that kid, man. He threw the ball well. Yeah, uh... He did. He threw it real well. How many times? How many yards did Vaden have? About 154, I think we said. 154 just for just to Vaden, and he had how many touchdowns? Three. Three. Hey, that's that's big. That's averaging 50 yards. You know, uh, how many catches? What eight or nine? Something like that. And, and you know, uh, 50 yards a touchdown, we'll call it. You know, so that, that's actually pretty big. Oh. Um, uh, only had one long one. One for about 30 yards, I remember. Uh, but, hey, the kid played great. Uh, but, you know, the receiver don't catch the ball without the good quarterback tossed it to him. And uh, you got to toss the tater right where it needs to be. That's right. And, I, and that's something I think this kid does well is maybe sometimes you look at a, at a quarterback throwing the football, he don't throw it exactly where it needs to be to be caught, but he throws it where the other team can't catch it and gives our team an opportunity. Um, that's That's big. Yeah, but uh, I just think I just think that emotions emotions in the game of football uh, can can play a big role. And sometimes sometimes maybe you get your emotions in the game a little too much, and you have a personal foul or, or something like that. I mean, I mean, we just gotta cut that yeah, out because it's uh, a dog uh, fight when you're in there. I mean, I like to see the I don't like to see the you know fist being thrown, but I like to see the kids going at it. You know. Right, so settle yeah, down, I, I really settle down, down and just play within the rules of the game. I didn't see a little pushing and shoving, and hey, that's that's just part of being a man. You you push and shove on each other. I agree, I agree, but <laughs> settle down and play within the rules. I, I, I do agree with you there, because there's a lot of penalties you get that are unnecessary. I mean, because if it you think cost. about it, if you think about it, you say you got a first down and 10 from maybe, I don't know, the 33-yard line, and then you get out there and you hit somebody and get a personal foul. Well, now you got first and 25 from the 18, and you've really hurt your team. So we we got to cut that out. That's right. Uh, anyway, Paul, our defense. What did you think about the defense? Well, uh, Chris we Edwards, him. Chris Edwards stepped up, and made some good plays for us, and uh, uh, Askew, of course, he got that pick six. It got called back, but he got a pick six. That's well, well right. done. You know the the first what was it? The first play of the ball game, we kicked to him. Uh, we had a little bit of a blown coverage, which that happens sometimes in play action. You got to be prepa- you got to be prepared for that, and you know the first the first play of the game is typically not the deep ball. So right, you and, don't and, really, and we, loaded, we loaded up the box. They, they were in kind of a run formation, and then they play yeah. action just and, and went deep. And 
typically, like you say, you don't expect that right out of the gate. I gates. thought it was a, a good strategy on their part. And it, right. it kind of caught the kid by surprise. But a, after that, though, after that, he settled down. And, and, and they didn't score again until like seven minutes ago in the ball game or something like that. Yeah, uh, we actually had and that was on one of our, guys. Uh, that was on our younger teams. So, yeah. And they uh, actually played so well. So we settled down and made a lot of plays and got two or three turnovers and uh, played real well defensively. And I and, – and, and we may have even got two or three sacks on the game. We did. Uh, uh, had some real good uh, plays defensively. And, uh, hey, what what more can you ask for than just, you know, get out there and make some tackles? And the score was 24-6 at halftime to us. So, we held their we held their main team to six points in the first half. So, uh, yeah. anytime you can do that, uh, you've had a pretty good showing on D. Pretty. All in all, Paul, we, we had a, a great little – Little game, don't you agree? We we played a good ball game, and Monterey was not a bad football team. Uh, they moved the ball well at times, and you know they had a great strategy. They wanted to win. You could tell, and and a lot of people maybe not understanding. Uh, Monterey Friday night when when they were on the field versus us, that was their last opportunity. They that that last loss to get into the playoffs. And, you know, it kind of stings a little bit, especially those senior players. Uh, we ruined their chances of, of actually playing an extra game in the playoffs. So, I can understand the fight that, you know, they, they were bringing it to. Even their coach at one time was ready to bring it bring it to the ref, I believe. Uh, he was fired up. Yeah, he was. And, uh, uh Man, I man, I had never seen a, uh, seen the crowd all 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 year get into it like they did that night. But but, but man, when they throw that when they throw that uh, ten yard penalty or whatever it was on that coach, uh, everybody in that crowd was saying was doing the Daniel Bryan. Uh, I think they seen my shirt and they were they were cheering it with me. Yes, 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 yes. yes. They were pumped up, man. <laughs> yeah. Maybe uh, maybe maybe we need some more coaches get fired up, get the old fans behind it. You but, gotta uh, get them fired up. Get you get you but, the team uh, rally. But yeah, it's it starts with that crowd. If they got a uh, your headset issue, got, everybody. Yeah, my ears was maybe a little bit. Maybe somebody's talking about you. But uh, they claim when your ears. But the thing about it is, though, uh, gotta get that crowd into it, man. It's it's gonna be a big game later on to Friday night. But get we'll talk about up. that later. But anyway, special teams. Uh, first off, talk about uh, Levi Halliburton. Uh, he was one for two on field goals. And, and to tell you the truth, I, I think that referee that was blind, because I think, think he, made, he was blind. I think he made both of them, because from my vantage point, it looked down, like it was down the middle, but the ref, uh, he didn't have his glasses on. It so, looked uh, good to me, too. But, so, uh, you know. uh, but we'll just go ahead for, for the show's sake and say he was two for two on field goals and keep up the good work. <laughs> Well, statistically speaking, Uncle BS would probably say it was BS and, you know, he made the field goal, but it didn't count. Uh, it didn't count, but it counted in her book. Regardless, <laughs> it looked good from where I was sitting. I yeah, didn't it looked good from where I was sitting, so uh, uh, I think the, the guy got it wrong, but we, but who am I to judge? I mean, I'm not a judgmental kind of man, guy. Still, he got a good foot into it and kicked it well. Anyway, uh, good night kicking the football through the through the good. post and, uh, uh, and, 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 37 yard field goal. Hey, we discussed it last week. That's right. uh, well, they might have they might have kicked a 42 yarder at Copper Mason or something. But yeah. but hey, uh, that was uh, that was like some 30 years ago yeah, or something. So, uh, so uh, in the last few decades, uh, yeah. uh, this this the longest one kick. So we'll just go yeah. with that. Um, the punting game, our coverage was good. And uh, the kid, the still kid, covering good. I remember a punt the other night. Uh, I thought the ball was going to go in the end zone, and that's that thing just that thing yeah. come down the field. It hooked and it spun yeah. right out of bounds at the two yard line. So man, yeah, man, when you can get them kind of bounces, uh, you, you, you just got you go just got some uh, you got some punt up zone. power. That's right. Uh, maybe some of that pixie dust that uh, Butch Jones uh, waved <laughs> on that kicker, but uh, <laughs> but he punted it. And man, man, like I say, I thought it was going in the end zone. That sucker took a spin and it. It uh, uh it spun right out at the two, and I was thinking, wow. Yeah. Uh, that was an excellent punt. That's a good punt you're going to see all year. Now, I was kind of questioning the call at first. You know, we're in, in our own territory, 
they're, they hadn't moved the ball much. They hadn't moved the ball, but not as well as you would think. And I, I'm thinking, why not go for it here? You know, of course, we did have the lead. Maybe it's a little bit. Of course, at that time, we weren't up that that much. A couple of touchdowns. Hey, anything can happen. And, uh, of course, he punts it and it spins out at the two. And I believe, it, it, I believe we wound up getting a turnover like uh, on that very drive. So, yeah, so made the so made the made the call look just awesome. Right call. And that just goes show. Hey, sometimes us fans we're not we're not right. You know, they knew what they were doing. Uh, sometimes those things work out. But like I said, I was expecting to to go for it. It was fourth and I actually think maybe it was fourth and something. Then we get a penalty that backed us up five yards, didn't it? Maybe I have to go back and watch the, watch some film on that, but uh, regardless, the ball ends up at about the two, right. one and a half, two yard line. And, yeah. Hey, that was uh, that was a big big turning point in the game, really, because we we actually started extending the lead after that. That's uh, about the time. When did we get the pick six? Was that early on? Pick six was uh, later on, maybe the late third quarter or something. Late third, yeah. But. Nevertheless, special teams once again was shining, and you know, and returning the ball right off the right off the bat on special teams. Right. Uh, we return. we took the we took the opening kick. Uh, I think he got into their territory, but they backed him up on the our own forty nine. Yeah. Said he stepped out on the forty nine, but but hey, anytime you can start on your forty nine yard line, good field position, it makes a difference. Hey, that's folks. only that's only half the field to go, you know. Uh, I feel like we can score from the from the fifty yard line at, at right. almost any point. I feel like we can score. Um, yeah, so anytime you can do that, the screen uh, game worked worked well. You know. Uh, yeah, we ran the uh, we the ran screen. the middle screen. One of my favorite play calls. I like and, that uh, play call, but you, you know uh, you got to reserve that for a time when you need it. And I mean, I mean, the play we we completed the middle screen. Uh, if I remember right, uh, Jay goes about forty five yards for a touchdown. He does, so, and they had great uh, effort on that touchdown too, because he had to. He had to wiggle through some there. guys. He had to lay out. He to got get in the there though, and uh, he got it. So. Hey, congrats to that kid. He had a big big night receiving. Or, and I believe Harris even had a screen pass early on for about 20-something yards. Yeah, Harris is always. He's, you just expect when Harris gets the ball, he's going places, you know. Yeah, Harris, Harris, Harris is a good little, he's a good little, little kid. He, uh, uh, he he runs with passion, and he, he, he gives it everything he's got every time he touches the ball, and, and that's what it takes. Yep. Um, so we talked about the offense and the defense, special teams. Paul, who would you give your offensive? I know DTC gave their offensive player of the game to uh, the quarterback goes, and I can't disagree with that. They got actually gave the player of the game to him. So I, you know, offensively, I think he did throw the ball well, and uh, I think he deserves that. What about defense? Who would be your pick for defense? Chris Edwards. Chris Edwards. That's hey, he made. Chris Edwards at this point in the season, I hadn't uh, he hadn't got a lot of a lot of uh, uh, we hadn't really pointed him out a lot on the show and gave him a lot of uh, uh, pr uh, what's the word I'm looking for a lot of uh, credit a lot of credit yet yeah. but but Chris uh, Edwards let me tell you the defensive ends uh, they have a big responsibility end. in the uh, in the passing game he as a wonderful tiger and. Well. Uh, uh, our two defensive ends, uh, Piot and uh, uh, Chris Edwards, are doing a fine job getting to the quarterback, and yeah. and we got to make mention of them because they're doing a great job. Hey, Piot gets held a lot. I, I have noticed that over the last few games, he he just gets held, and you know. But the fact that they were getting held, the fact practice. that they get held, and they still get back there and make plays. You've got That's to right. you've got to make mention but of them for doing a great the, job. Going back to the uh, the Edwards kid, hey. He, I was talking with another fan the other night. He's a, he's a fan of our show, Paul. Uh -huh. And we both agree that Edwards could possibly be the defensive MVP this season because he's played that well throughout the whole year. He definitely has. I've uh -huh. seen him make a lot of plays. Heard his name called a lot on the radio when I wasn't at the game. And uh -huh. uh, uh, he's, a, he's a talented young man. He is. I'll he's give he's him credit for that. You can tell he's playing with a lot of heart. Now... Um, like I said, our other defensive end is playing great also. You can't take nothing away from him. Yeah, matter matter of fact, any of the other well kids on the too. defense, they're playing well. But Edwards has stood out in my mind. It's just he's 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 been making it making things happen. Right. Stringing out those runs against Charleston County. 
Yeah. Hey, that is important when you string those guys out and they're doing it and they're doing it well. Uh, so, Paul, moving on, uh, we're going to take a quick commercial break, but we'll come back and we'll talk about uh, the big game we got coming up. Huge game. Probably going to be the it's the game of the year for us, maybe, up to this point. It so, definitely is the game you of the can year because uh, any ch- anytime you've got a chance to win a, win a region championship, it's big. Hey, it's all on the line right here Friday night. And of course, a chip, know, Our chip's in the middle and we're all in. That's one way of putting yeah. it. I think... I don't know that we could actually lock it up right now. We still have two more ball games to go. We have to win, and you can't overlook those teams. But but uh, but it, uh, it'll be a big step in the right what direction. Essentially, it's on the line Friday night, and that that's the way we have to look at it and approach this game. It's a big game. Correct. They got a good football team, but uh, we're gonna take a quick commercial break here, and uh, we'll be back. Maybe have a special guest here for long. Uh, we we'll just have to keep our uh, I'm keeping an eye on my phone, and maybe he'll call in. Or uh, it maybe even drop by. But uh, hey, we'll be right back. Stay with Hey, man, Reno Bun here uh, for Tiger Transport. i just going to tell you guys, man, if you need something hauled off to the dumpster, you need your car hauled across the country, you know, to maybe uh, California or even up New Jersey Turnpike, man, don't charge much at all, whatever the tows are, man. They got tolls and stuff and trolls and tolls they pay when you go up to uh, New Jersey's and stuff on them turnpikes. Uh, and, and you can get it hauled up there on the cheap. A Tiger Transport, safe and sound, man. But I tell you what, uh, I tell you what, this guy, when they met him, I was on the road with him, man. And, and you know, sometimes them truckers, they only got one door, man. You know why they only got one door on them roadway truckers, man? Uh, so the driver knows which side to get in, man. Uh, he'd be confused without it, man. But Tiger Transport, man, call him if you need some hauling to it. I went on the road with him, man. We was going up around uh, New Jersey Turnpike. I stopped off this little diner, man. Uh, went in there and got us a cheeseburger, some French fries, and a, and a thing of coffee, man. A little old mug of coffee. And, man, all at once, three big old biker dudes, man, they pull up pull up in the parking lot and come in our diner. That first big old biker reaches over and he grabs grabs my hamburger. And he takes a big old bite out of it and he reaches over and grabs my buddy uh, Kevin's uh, hamburger, takes a big old bite out of it, just puts it back down on the plate. Now, next big old biker comes up and he grabs a handful of french fries from both our plates, man, and just starts m- munching on them, man, eating the egg out of them. And then, and then he comes back and, gra- and takes my coffee. And he turns up my coffee and drinks the whole thing, chugged it, man. Hot as far, chugged it, and reached over and gets my buddy Kevin's coffee and chugs it. And well, well, we just get up and go pay the ticket and leave, you know, scared to death. And uh, the old guy looked over to the little waitress lady, and them big old bikers did right after we left. And he said, uh, he said, you know what? He said, them, them, them ain't much of a man right there. Just let us come in here and eat their burgers and fries and drink up all their coffee. She's like, yeah, that's true. Uh, they ain't much of drivers neither, man. They just uh, backed all over three motorcycles. <laughs> I thought that's a pretty good one. Uh, but, hey, if you need something called Tiger Transport today, man, they will fix you up. Tiger Transport, Gornsville, Tennessee. Write that down, Google it, whatever you got to do. Hey, I'll holler back to you boys in a minute. We'll talk. Welcome back to In the Huddle. Hut, hut. Hut. All right. As my cohort, uh, mighty Coach Martin says, welcome back to In the Huddle. We're uh, back to talk a little bit about uh, some big-time football game this Friday night. And it's going to be a big game, Paul. You expect to see a lot of people there? Yeah, I expect to be some uh, old people come in that I haven't seen in 20 years. But, uh, uh because they, they talk like they want to be at the big game. And Nashville Christian Eagles are coming to town. Uh, hey, they're going to fly they have, here. They have the same record we do. They're 5-2. and two, We're 5-2. and two. They're undefeated in the region, and we're undefeated in the region. So uh, the Eagles, uh, they might even they might even fly in here on a on, on their spread their wings and fly in here. So so they're going to be excited. Uh, they're going to fly the flock all the way from Nashville. Hey, these big, rich private schools, you know, they're coming in here to the old Country Boys Tavern, 
playing on this old cow pasture of a field. And, <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's time to take it to them. Uh, That's right. You know, the best, we, we keep saying this over and over, and you said Coach Dillard once told you that what? That uh, uh, you always got a game plan until you get hit in the mouth. If somebody gets hit in the mouth, and Friday night, it's time to hit somebody in the mouth. That's right. Uh, Buckle your chin straps. We need to introduce them. them. We need to introduce them to the to the Tony Ford Field and be physical. Get in there and hit them every play. We've got to be physical with these guys because uh, I watched a little film on them and 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 the team when when teams get physical with them they uh they're not as talent they're not as good when they get physical with them as as they are those teams that kind of lay back and just let them have their way. Yeah, you you look, they've run through our region uh, flawlessly so far. They're still undefeated in the region, same as we but, are. But they ha- they've played kind of the the lower tier teams. You're maybe. right. We, we've, we've hit the meat of the schedule. and they they uh, still got the rough part of it, though. That's they've got, like they've got us, and they've got Middle Tennessee Christian, and they've got Trailstow County. So, I mean, they got, they're they about to get the meat on their on their uh, lunch lunch table. That's right. From what I can tell, they got a good, good football team. Uh, well disciplined football team. They play uh, fundamentally sound football, they, and they'll tackle you. They'll come up and they'll make a play they got and some tackle. Tacklers, a few athletes. Uh, Thirty four. The nose guard also plays a little bit tight end. He can catch the football, uh, but at nose guard, uh, I'm anxious to see who we have at center Friday night. Uh, we had one of our centers who went down, Jason West, with an ankle injury against uh, Joe Burns early on in that game, and I think Kobe's still been playing center. And either way, I like the matchup. I think maybe he matches up with Kobe a little better. But like I said, uh, Wes is a smaller kid, but, you know, he's stout. Uh, he can hold his own. He's actually blocking well. Uh, but regardless, either uh, one of the kids I think are capable of blocking. But they're athletes on defense. They're number 11. He'll come up and hit you. Uh, pretty quick. They're number 27. 11 uh, plays uh, what on offense? Running back, right? Yeah, 11 on offense. He's going to run the ball, and he's a good-looking athlete. Got some good speed, some good moves to him, so we want to make sure we hit number 11 because he's a, he's a smaller kid. And then they've got a number 26 that looks like he runs with a little power, so uh, uh, got to stop 26. And then number three uh, can run out and catch the ball uh, the, and do some good things for them. throwing game, they have a pretty good throwing game. But uh, like So a, we've got to get pressure on that quarterback. And, and really, to tell you the truth, I, I think we're going to have to do it up the middle because I, I think I think that center is having a little bit of trouble uh, uh, blocking. I think time. So, so I think our nose guard is going to get some pressure and He's get on up have a there. Ball Friday night. So I let's let, so let's do like what we used to do when uh, uh when Coach Diller was coaching and, and bring a nose guard blitz. <laughs> I, I, I think Cortell could have a he could have a ball Friday night. Oh. Let's just blitz just them from, from all I angles. Think. I mean, I mean, uh, let's just blitz them so much that uh, uh, and seeing different men and just uh, confuse that guy and uh, scare him to death because because he, he knows the blitz is coming. But let's just keep him on his heels where he don't know where it's coming from. That's right. Hey. <laughs> But we like blitz said, him. We just blitz him and tear him up. Corthell can have fun Friday night. I really believe that if the on the front line, if he matches up well with our center, I think. And just being a freshman, I'm anxious to see how that matchup turns out. Cor- Corthell or, or Corthell? Corthell, let me show you something. I'm going to show you one of my old techniques. You can't stand up because I can't see you. I got you dropped out. You lying down. All right, all right. Your first move. I want you to come in here. I want you to take your hand and I want you to just shove that, shove that center out of your way and tag that quarterback. <laughs> I call this move the push. You've got to, you got to take your first step. You've got to take your first step, and you've got to come in there and just get that yeah, center really out of your way. Ball. You got to get that center out of your way and <laughs> tag it, QB. I can't say nothing but your belly. Well, I'm trying to show them something. The push. <laughs> we'll call this the push. You get in there. As professional as this production is, you got to scoot back a little bit now, bud. You get in there. As professional as this production crew has been, they were not prepared for Paul Martin doing the push at nose guard. The fact is, though, you've got to make. It's all about that first step. You've got to get in there on that first step, and you've got to get your hands on that center, and you've got to move him out of your way. Oh, and then you got a clear shot at QB. Oh. 
Oh, you got me tickled over here, buddy. You got to defeat the blocker. You got to defeat the blocker, push him out of your way, and get to QB. It's simple as that. Was well, that the technique you used back when you played, Paul? Yeah, I mean, I, I had, I mean, I used to wrestle for four years, and and uh, I was always taught uh, when the guys lined up on you, uh, like it, you put your wrestling moves on him. You 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 wrestled. You know you know what to do. So you just take your hands, you get to, get them on him, and just shove him out of the way and go get the QB. Oh, I'll, I'll be honest with you. I'm finally back. I was choked up. I about swatter half my dick. <laughs> but, but the only wrestling move I remember, as a, well, I do remember several. I had some favorite wrestlers when I was a kid. And the Ultimate Warrior, it seemed like every time, and just imagine the Ultimate Warrior was in a football game. It'd be about the third quarter, three and a half quarters in, they'd get him whipped. You know, he, he just looked dog tired, makeup running, just looked like he was beat. And then all of a sudden, did, he'd go did down. The film, did the film catch that little block on, on film? They got you blocking there, but the old warrior would grab that bottom rope and he'd go to shaking it. Shows how he goes shaking it, Paul. He'd shake that bottom rope and then he'd climb on up to the next one. And so when he got that top rope, shaking it. You knew, you just knew right then that the Intercontinental Champion of the World was still going to be the Intercontinental Champion of the World. That's he right, because when that, he might have looked ass about halfway through the fight, but when he started shaking them ropes, the power hit him, man, and, and it's right. almost like a, a second gear hit him, and, and then, right. uh, like the hook, when the hook goes... Well, that's right, when you get your second win... When the hook starts pointing that finger, you know uh, uh, he's saying... I've had enough. Now it's you that's going down. He would get the <laughs> he would <laughs> second win and it's all over with. That's right. That's uh, what we're going to have to do Friday night. But they're, the, they're, warrior. the fact is, uh, they're going to come at us Friday night and, and they're going to uh, they're going to deliver some blows. But man, men, when you get that second win, be like the Hulk and and, and we'll call it the we'll call it the Tiger Mania and let's I get the Tiger like, Mania rumbling. I say be like the Ultimate Warrior. No, it's the Tiger no, Mania because, no, because we're the no, Tigers. Yeah, that's, that's true too, but <laughs> Tiger Mania is going to run wild. wild. When you when you feel like you've just been beat and you're on your back, you just imagine you're grabbing that bottom rope and you're going to pull yourself up out of that hole and you're going to get back to fighting. Yeah, this is a battle between the Hulk and the Warrior, and and uh, and if, as, if, as if y'all ain't y'all 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 probably Hulk too y'all probably too young to remember old WrestleMania six. But let me tell you something, brother. Uh, at WrestleMania six. The ultimate warrior, when he started shaking that rope, he come back and the hook, I don't know if y'all know it, but he liked to drop that big boot. But he went to drop that big boot and warrior rode out of the way and come in for that big splash and, and that Toronto uh, uh, Sky Dome was fired up and he hit that splash and uh, I believe Hogan kicked out, but but the rail counted three anyway and he said and it was all over. The warrior, he was the champ of the world. That's right. what you gotta do sometimes. You gotta be that have that warrior spirit. <laughs> yeah, ultimate warrior. And he had some good, good looking face paint on, didn't he? He scared me to death. I, I had an opportunity to meet him. He used to go, he used to go, ah. One of my aunts, she loved wrestling. She took us down to a municipal one time, and I got the opportunity to meet the ultimate warrior. And up close, I was I was probably eight, nine years old, maybe ten. Did you, did he you? He scared the crap out of me, Paul. Here's my best warrior Im imitation for you guys. All right. <laughs> And then that airplane goes down into a nose dive, and, and, and it and the cockpit goes down, <laughs> and the eagles are going to come um, crashing. All right, that's enough for uh, Ultimate Warrior. Let's get back talking some Ultimate Football, Paul. All right, some more Ultimate Tiger Football. <laughs> How do you think this game's going to go Friday night? I mean, pound the ball between the tackles, hit the corners, throw the ball downfield. What do you think? We got to do it all or just focus on what we do best? I think from what I've seen on film, uh, we're going to have to go sideline to sideline. I don't usually I don't usually say run east to west, but 
I think this may be an exception to the rule because from what I've seen on film, when, when the other team, the Heritage boys, went east to west and they went sideline to sideline, they got their biggest yardage. So I think that we need to run that boat sweep and some tall sweeps and some uh, reverses. But we got to get to the corners and maybe even a screen, a middle screen. But stay on them corners, man. Uh, you're going to find yardage on the corners. Here's my opinion, and I've said this from day one. Uh, we got 285 pounds, 315 pound lineman. This is line up, run it out. I don't care how good their nose guard is. It's you know they got a good linebacker sitting back there, good strong safety, and number 27. Let's line up between the tackles and hit them like we have all season, and pound it, pound the rock at them. Now, now if we that's get good yard, theory. if we get good yardage doing that, I, I, I would agree. That's that's a good strategy because the straight. I is didn't say what you've seen. The straight is point is a, a straight line, but if we get in there and we try to run it up the middle and we get two yards and we're struggling doing it, then uh, the lateral play is always there. Just go sideline to sideline, get you eight yards, you first down, then go back pounding. And sometimes too, when you get to run sideline to sideline, you have to know when to make that cut. And if you cut at the right moment, big yards. If you cut it too late, most kids wait too late to cut upfield. It happens a lot on kickoffs. Now, I've said this too on the kickoffs. I like taking a kickoff right up the middle. Everybody always wants to get the corner. I like taking that kickoff, like you said, the straightest, uh, the fastest way to the end zone is straight, straight ahead. But what, what I've seen, though, is teams are kicking it kind of east to west on us and making us have to start zigzaggy to start with. And then they're thinking, they're thinking, well, I'm probably going to be able to get the most yards if I just head toward the sideline, hard as I can head. Yeah, you find you a couple kids willing to block and get behind them if you're back there at the deep man and take off straight up field, stay on their butt. When they get tackled, you'll get tackled. That's the way I've always seen it. Uh, I like getting upfield on a kickoff. Get every yard you can get and get it quick. Uh, same thing running the football. I love my game plan includes keeping the football away from them. And to do that, you need to get three to four yards of carry and pound it at them. And if you, I think if we do that, that keeps we'll win the time of possession. And we, we discussed that a couple weeks ago. Time of possession is key to winning ball, big ball games. Uh, uh, if they don't have the ball, they can't score. And that's an old strategy. But it, it still works today. Now, special teams-wise, we was watching uh, a little bit on Nashville Christian earlier. They they kicked the ball well. Uh, in fact, I think maybe they kicked close to the end zone a time or two. Uh, uh, but uh, as far as the coverage kick. team, looks like the teams are getting the ball somewhere around the 30 or 40 mostly every time. So, yeah. uh, the so we, should, we should be able to get some good field position on them. Uh, yeah. And as far as their athletes on offense, number 11, we're going to have to definitely hit him because number 11's got good moves and he, he zigs and zags through coverage. And you got to get a hand on number 11. And number 26 is a good, solid, run-hard kind of back. Uh, 27 can catch a football. Number three can catch a football. Quarterback, I've only seen him run it maybe two or three times, and mostly that was when he was under pressure. So, uh I'm not real, real worried about the quarterback beating us on a run, but just keep him contained. Don't, don't let him oh, yeah. have, have a chance to take off. The one kid that stood out in my mind on the on the field is a 27. He's an athlete. Yeah, on and, uh, defense, that kid's coming in there really, really quick. So he can probably gotta, play anywhere. I we've think. got to, and that kid's name's Sullivan. So make sure you hit Sullivan. We're gonna hit him, man. We're, he ain't got no name on his jersey, but 27. Look for it and hit him every chance you get. And uh, I think that'll. Uh, That'll wrap that game up if we can hit, just hit them people. That's and, all it amounts uh, to. Just a stat, that I, just a stat that I was seeing. I mean, I'm not Uncle BS, and uh, but but I but just a stat that I seen. Uh, this Nashville Christian team is averaging about 47 points a game. Uh, and they're only giving up about nine points a game. So uh, yeah. we're going to have to break through, and we're going to have to find ways to score on this team because they're not really giving up a whole lot. And the most they give up all year is 22 points. So uh, yeah. uh, got beat so game. we've got to – and they got beat that game. You're right. But, but both their losses they've got has been by four points combined. So yeah. – uh, the guys that goes to show you the guys don't get whipped, uh, but 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 we're going we're going to change that for them Friday night because yeah. we're going to go out there and whip these guys. They're they're just a couple <laughs> plays away from being undefeated. 
uh, but so are we. If you really look at it, Watertown, we gave up some big plays. Carthage, one play, turns that whole game around. Right. And, you know, I think the matchup, it's 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 on Friday night. All, all in all, though, I think this is going to be a great ball game, and it may be one of the better ball games that we've seen since maybe the South Pitt Gorgeful game in uh, 2012 when we beat them 14-13. I mean, well, that, is, I that was a pretty big game, game, but this one right here will be a big one too. And, and you're going to want to come. You're going to want to uh, be in attendance this game because it's going to be a really good one. A game like this, I know and I, I said this a few weeks ago, a game like Hartsville or even the Middle Tennessee Christian, a win there puts you back on track to where this program once was and what we expect out of this program. And, and, uh, and we a lot expect of, physicality and hard-nosed football. And the truth of the matter is a lot of people, a lot of people uh, over the years, maybe they've maybe they forgot going for football because maybe, maybe they've overlooked us or something, but – you guys have the opportunity to go back out there and put Gornsville football back on the map and say, and, and maybe in the next few years, people might say, hey, I'm a little worried about going to Gornsville because I know them guys will bang me up and they'll hit and me. I still know people that are intimidated by coming to Gornsville to play football. And even on the road, uh, we've got to get it back to where when Gornsville comes to town, people are, are, are shivering in their boots thinking, hey, we're playing Gornsville. We, we know what the, they can do. Hey, I want. I know Nashville Christian. Their program's really come up. I think next year they're going to what Division Two. Uh, I hadn't heard nothing about that. But, I think uh, they've already stated that next season they'll be Division Two, and uh, you know, let's let's send them out with a bang. You know, that's right. Playing these little public schools. That's right. Yeah, that's, because that's uh, uh, anytime you get a chance to put one on the old private school, it it it, it means something to you. Yeah, Paul. Uh, I do have some. Stats from Uncle BS. We was talking about uh, a couple of these earlier. I'm going to see if I can find them here. Of course, I don't think I have all of these on here. But I do have a lot of them. And I just have to find it. A stat that stood out in my mind too, Paul, was, uh, you know, we, uh, I, I was looking, Nashville Christian's about a 50-50 as far as run, pass. They're, they're, they're right around the 50. I think it's maybe 52 pass to 48 run. And ours was about 75% running, you know. So, uh -huh. when, when you take something like that, the time of possession when you're running the ball, 75% of the time, uh, those games are usually... Over a little bit quicker because the clock's not stopping. And I think that works well with our strategy as to what we need to do. Uh, uh, and I think I think what we need to do is, uh, now I might regret saying this later, but I think. I'm sure you will. But I'll probably regret saying this later, but I think, we, I think you take the ball in a game like this. If you win the coin flip, I think you take the ball and try to, Run the clock down as much as you can, and hope to get the early seven nothing lead. And, and then if you can run the clock down to to go along with that, then uh, you uh you could go somewhere. And if your defense can stop them after you've already scored seven, then it could be really big if you can get a two possession lead on the guys. Yeah. So I take the football first if it's me in this game. Yeah, I agree. Uh. And try to kill as much I of the do, clock as I, I do can. I do like getting the ball after the half. And, of course, if you win the toss, you almost have to defer the second half. But but in a game like this, uh, if you could go out there and score and take maybe six minutes off the first quarter uh, uh, clock and then and then maybe possibly stop them on defense and get yourself a two-possession lead, it could be the difference in the ball game. Yeah, you're right. So I, I, right. I'm going against my own theory, but I, I think uh, I'd take the football in this game. I can't, I can't disagree with that. Uh, anyway, we were just talking about Uncle B.S. and his stats. And, you know, he's always got some pretty good stats he brings towards us, Paul. He, bring, he brings them in. Well, have you found them uh, stats yet? I have. And let me just get it to where it'll pull up right here. And... I'll switch it over to Uncle B.S. 
I'm pulling it up right now. All right, now. The Uncle BS Research Group. All right, and they've sent us some, uh, my source has sent me some nice facts about Nashville Christian for the show. All right. Uh, and he says there's 494 students, K through 12, enrolled in Nashville Christian School, taught by 64 faculty members. Not a single one wears Brut by Faber J or can locate Gornzel without Google or GPS in their fancy car or SUV. Do <laughs> you think they're going? They're, they're going to get on the interstate, and not know how to get here. <laughs> basically, is uh, I guess what Uncle BS is trying to say that they're going to have to Google where Gordonsville is. Uh -huh. He says, speaking of brute sales of the most manly smelling clone on this planet are up five hundred percent at the dollar store in Gordonsville, as well as Walmart across the river. <laughs> so reports out of Monterey state that the brute smell will linger for months. After Friday night, he <laughs> hashtags brewed up blue after that. All right. It says also, this, this is an interesting fact right here, probably one of my favorites. It says Nashville Christian School is located on Sawyer Brown Road, <laughs> named for the 1992 through 1998 CMA Band of the Year. It says Some Girls Do was released by the band in March of 1992. You know that song, Paul? Yeah, dude. Can you sing any lyrics to that real quick? No, 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 no. Oh, but some girls do. You don't know all Like boys that. like me. There you go. Uh, That's new. It reached the top of the country charts. It has a line in it. He says it has a line in it that states that good old boys can't get no breaks and rich boys think they got what it takes. Well, Uncle B.S. says rich boys don't have any idea what it takes to win at Turning Ford Field. And the Tigers will get all the breaks. He has a prediction of Gville 27, Nashville Christian 24. And that's his prediction. My prediction is Gville 35, Nashville Christian 27. 35 27. Well, Paul, I hate scores, I do. Just oh. give us one, just so we can see what, 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 what happens. <laughs> just give us one to see what happens. Uh, What's shoot. your prediction? Let me think on it just a second because sometimes, uh, let's see. My prediction is Sawyer Brown will not reach the top of the country charts anymore. That's my prediction. I think his heyday is done. But uh, hey, that, that was an interesting fact that he ta talks about uh, good old boys, rich boys. That's basically what's going to be Friday night. The good old boys versus the rich boys. And you know, uh, someone other night said they used to throw money at us. Wow. You know, throw quarters out on the field. And I actually remember Franklin Road doing this also. All them rich private schools coming out to these poor country towns. And, and stuff like that just pisses you off and just makes you want to hit them right. even harder. But hey, you know what? They're, they're almost like they're almost like trying to spit in your face. Like, I'll tell you like what a, I would do. Like a... Uh, uh, you boys ain't got no money like what we do, and when they when they do us like that, then uh, then we ought to uh, we are just uh. If I were a coach, okay, if I were a coach, another team, the fans start throwing money out on the field at us. You know what I'm doing? What are you doing? I am stuffing my pockets, and I'm going to buy some chicken nuggets after the game <laughs> at McDonald's. That's exactly what I'm doing. Oh, uh, on the rich boys. I'll do it. Meal if tickets, they're, if they're crazy tickets. enough to throw it on the field, then hey, we'll take it, won't we? Hey, I'll take it. Any day of the week, I'll take it. It don't matter if they throw $100 worth of quarters on that field. We'll, we'll collect them, won't we? That's right. Pick it up. That'd be my, my game, my next play call. Pick up the quarters on two. Ready? <laughs> you know, go get the money. Or if that's the case, we may do, uh, that may be our play call. It's, we, we'll call it the chicken nugget right. Chicken nugget right. <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't. I did think about this sometime. When you run the wing tea, I just caught the chicken wing tea. <laughs> the chicken wing tea. <laughs> chicken wing tea. And, uh, uh, instead of the book sweet, maybe we'll call it the, the chicken sweet. Chicken wing tea. <laughs> so that's basically essentially what it is. You, know, you go out and you got the little guys on it. first the wing tea. The chicken wing tea. Right. But uh, <laughs> let's see if Reno Bun knows anything about the chicken wing tea. Hey, 
Hey, man, bring that old bow in here, man. I need a place to order the goes, man. Uh, I, yeah, I need uh, a pizza with one half of it with that barbecue chicken wing. And the other half, I want on it uh, pepperonis and some sausages, man. Maybe some in banana peppers, man. Uh, and a dozen chicken wings. Can you fix me up? This is Paul from In the Huddle. Well, I need the place to order to go, man. This ain't key stop. No, this is Paul you got from In the Huddle uh, down at that radio show. Man, uh, I might have to call him back. Man, let me call you back. I got to get this order place for these chicken wings, man. They mentioned the chicken wing tea, man. It's got me pumped up by chicken wings. I'll call you right back. Hang on, man. I'll call Oh, you reach in the huddle. Hey, man, Reno Bun here. I just called and talked some football with you boys and maybe some wrestling. Man, y'all been bringing up some wrestling. Love it, man. Uh, WWE, wide, wide, uh, whatever E means, worldwide, E. I don't know what that stands for, but hey, it used to be Federation. They've changed it now to Evangelical or something. I don't know. But hey, still some good stuff on TV, man. Monday Night Raw took me a long time to figure this out. Monday Night Raw filmed on Sunday night. Lost a lot of bets over that. Uh, didn't have any clue that people already know who won, and I was betting on them. But hey, lessons learned in life. Uh, gonna talk some football, man. Good week last week, Monterey. Brewed it up, went up there, kicked some hind end. That first place kind of disappointed, man. Let the guy get behind us like you. Yeah. Uh, can't be having that. You got to keep him in front of you, man. Uh, got to keep him in front of you. The key to victory this week, going to keep these boys in front of you and keep them from crossing that stripe down there at the goal line. Got to stop them, man. Uh, hey, big game coming up. Title is on the line. Yeah, the the region championship belt is up for grabs this, this Friday night up here at Turney, Turney Ford Field. Uh, go up to your stop right there and go on to hang a left. Come on down, join us uh, at Gornsville High School right there at Turney Ford Field. Gonna have a tailgate party, man. Gonna try to make it uh, hot dogs, four o'clock, man. Hot dogs, cold drink, tater chips, uh, shop right barbecue. Well, uh, the Reno Bun Special, man. Go in there and get your Reno Bun Special and bring it on down to the to the uh, block party or the tailgate party, whatever you want to call it, at the Tiger Den down there, man, right there in the parking lot at Gornsville Elementary School. Gonna be a show. Bring your popcorn. Gonna be a show, man. Talking about wrestling. You got me fired up about wrestling, man. Hulk Hogan is one of my heroes and an American legend. Now, what a lot of people don't understand about Hulk Hogan is not only is he a good wrestler, he's a good-looking man. He's looking old, but still looking good. Ripped up. Uh, I tell you what he's got. I, uh, just the other day, I hopped my refrigerator. Right? I pop out a pack of hot dogs, okay? And as soon as I look at that hot dog, I realize, hey, this thing looks identical to the skin of Hulk Hogan, man. He has got the skin of a hot dog. Now, he's getting a little old, maybe 20 years ago. I pop it in the microwave about 30 to 45 seconds, and that thing busted open. Got a little bit darker. But hey, skin of a hot dog now is like Hulk Hogan is if you pop it in your microwave. I tell you what else he's got going for him, man. And he's always had this. You know, he's strong enough. He's been to AG Strength Barn. And he can rip that shirt right off of him, man. Now, if any of y'all know, just reach up and grab your shirt and try to rip it, man. It's kind of tough, man. That cotton is some tough stuff. But, uh. Anyway, man, if you take and look at Hulk Hogan's hair, there's women across this country that have died to get hair like Hulk Hogan, man. Blonde, Chinese-like silken hair. Hard to beat. Uh, Don Todd must do the cutting on her. Todd's hair is... <laughs> he is a barber and a half, man. Gets Hogan out of the chair about every Wednesday and... He gets out the barber chair down there at Todd's hair design, gets his hair done up down there. Blonde Chinese like silk and uses product. They got all kind of red kin product in there. It's just like Hulk Hogan uses, man. Go down there and buy you some. Put that in your hair. I'm telling you, wonderful stuff. Uh, get on down there, man. And let's go up our Friday night. When you get out the barber chair at Don Todd's, you stop at ShopRite. You stop off at... Uh, 
Profits painting and remodeling. Get your face painted. They'll paint your face. And you call Tiger Transport to haul you on the hay wagon to the game and get up there and bring you cowbell. We'll make some noise right there in the parking lot. Bring you a uh, you shop right special, Reno Bun special out there shop right. Make some noise on Friday night and bring you popcorn, man. Uh, it's going to be a show. And I hope to see you there, man. I'll let you boys go and uh, I'll holler back at you. I put my hands in on a little bit. Bring me a ball. Let me get my hands in. Let me get one, too. Now, here's my ball. <laughs> That'll work. Put that, put that bad boy on. Get back in the old days. You got to hold your cord up. It'll look good. You got to squirt it around. That's what Paul was doing one night. He was holding it. It's the first ball. Oh, we live yet? This thing's even got a mic on it. Can I turn it up? <laughs> it's got a volume button. I don't even know where the thing went. You got your mirrors? I can't hear you over here. Oh, you got your headset up here. <laughs> what? I got mine on back. You got a microphone down there so you can talk. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we'll, be Pat, we'll be Pat, John, and Keith, I guess. Boom! <laughs> Pat, get whooped, man. That's that boy. Yeah. It don't matter been whooped okay. once. Uh, are we live yet? No, whatever. You ready to go? All right, let's go. No. Uh, good to have you here to, today on In the Huddle, Mr. Scott Clemens, a uh, long-time fan. Special guest. You're our special guest today, so uh, uh, everybody everybody wants uh, everybody wants to hear some stories about uh, that you remember about about me, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> first of all, I want to say, am I the first guest on the show? The yes, you are. Hey, that's, I, that's an honor. I'm proud to be here. Uh, Paul, he's got me. He's got me decked out in this uh, his headset here, said to I feel like I'm on the field. Uh, Paul, you graduated what year? 2002. 2002. So you played football in 2001, right? In 2000, right? 2000. So tell tell some stories you remember about anything. <laughs> Do you remember Paul falling through the side? I'll never forget it. Long as I live. Uh, the coaches always come out first. They turn around and I remember Paul, it seemed like it took him 10 minutes to hit the ground. <laughs> and he jumped right back up now. He's uh, a go getter. Did a good job. Uh, I remember a B team game. I can take his spot on the field who was playing. I don't remember who was playing, but uh, you was playing uh, no guard or yeah. jack or something. And no they, had, they had a big old fullback. That was against Westmoreland. I think it was Westmoreland. He hit you. I don't know if you hit him or he hit you. I don't know what it was, but I, I hit him because I was coming through there like a big old grill. I come at him. <laughs> I remember you. I remember when you when I got got him off of you. Said, "Oh, that hurt." Really <laughs> <laughs> uh, goes down. <laughs> it was. Uh, that's been a long time ago, Paul. It's been a long time. Well, what What about having you in uh, or having me in your class? What kind of student was I? Uh, <laughs> Mediocre? Best I remember. <laughs> I always strive to be mediocre. But I, I, the thing I remember most vividly about Paul was our, ma- our wrestling matches we had on the stage. Yeah. Uh oh. And that was some um, some severe entertainment. Son, yeah. Okay. <laughs> but now you go back and and like we talked about earlier, is Josh James and. Josh Leggett. Leggett. And, uh, ben uh, Elsenbach was the rail. Ben Elsenbach was the rail. Uh, Always the rail. Jeff Crowley. Crowley. There's Bunch no of, footage of this anyway. I don't know why we didn't. Uh, <laughs> it would have been epic. Because we would have made a lot of money, wouldn't we? Yeah. But you don't realize that started before y'all. Who used to do it? Uh, well, Brad Sykes and them was older than y'all, right? Yeah. I think they started it in Coach Wheels. Uh, we used to towel wrestle on the stage. You remember doing that? Mm-hmm. Not really, but uh, maybe that's for my day. Well, it was got pretty rough, and from there we kind of <laughs> threw in this WWF or WWE, whatever it is, wrestling. Yeah. And old Paul, you took it to the next level. Yeah. It, Atomic it, elbow drop. But if I remember right, in sociology class, you used to give me A's because I'd get up there and debate with old Josh Stiller, and that he he kind of. Uh, all he wanted to talk about is Mexicans and rednecks, and, uh, and, and it was easy to bait on him. <laughs> Might have to edit this out. Yeah, but that, that, that's what the man wanted to debate on. Well, uh, 
<laughs> Did we have that on the stage? No, we had that back in that uh, old room back there in that corner in the in the gym. In the old coach's basketball coach's office. I think I think that's where we had the class. One at. year I had it on the stage and it was like eight or nine people and then um, was that the year? That would have been two thousand eleven, right? Uh, when, when, when September 11th happened, that's where we, I was at. When that was we, like 2001, yeah. wasn't it? Oh. September 11th it was in Because I think I was in my yeah. 11th grade year. Was that's what I meant. Oh, yeah. one. Yeah. It's not 2011. 9-11. Yeah. And we was actually in your class when that happened. Yeah, because we was in that room. It's, it was Scott Agee's old office. Yeah. And Mr. Arnston come across the loudspeaker and said, everybody needs to turn the TV on. Yeah. And I just remember sitting there watching all that happen. And we didn't know what was happening. I think Paul was wanting to go wrestle at that point. Uh, oh, he, he was wanting to go wrestle some uh, Arabs. Or, <laughs> you ready to go? They figured it out. Could be. You ready to go figure it out? And, well, Paul, you got a list of questions. All there. right, the next question is, uh, how do you like the games from the stands? Well, I ain't going to sit here and lie to you. It's terrible. Uh, right in the heart. Yeah, right off the bat, yeah, it's, I told my wife, I ain't made to sit in bleachers. It's awful. You know, I... I coached junior high for years. I coached high school, so I, I never have watched a game from the stands. Till this year? Till this year. Well, a couple of years ago, I, I quit doing, doing junior high and just did high school. And I, I watched a couple of games from there, but I can't. I don't know. I just don't like it. I, I try to go to the press box on Friday nights, and you know, I'm on the headsets talking to the coaches, and if they see something, they ask me, you know, what's a safety doing, or what's a, or it's a, which way is the defense front slanting, or. Of course, you and I are pretty well watching all the plays and, and, and hollering, throw the ball, throw the ball, throw the ball. <laughs> Paul likes to throw the ball. He likes to demo the ball. He likes to iron out. He wants to iron out. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, when they give you that man-to-man -man coverage and, and and you run it like two or three times and you get like two yards, it's time to didn't you throw listen, it up and iron. Didn't you listen to anything I said back in the day? What, Coach Ford always said there's three things that can happen when you throw the ball, and two of them are bad. That, that's the truth, but, <laughs> but when you got Jay Vaden out there, more likely he's going to catch it and be gone. I will admit, Paul Martin has called several plays this year that's happened. Yeah, I've seen <laughs> When we hit Jay, where was we? You said hit we Jay. Did, we still hurt people. Joe Burns, and, Joe Burns. Uh, and they, they had 19 seconds left. And I kept hollering, being persistent, throw that ball to Jay, throw that ball to Jay, over and over and over. I finally over. threw it to him. <laughs> Yeah, we Oh, uh, Mitchell gets a block downfield and we score. Yep. So, uh, listen to Paul next time if you, if you can hear him from up there. Well, tomorrow, tomorrow <laughs> night I'll look down there and say, what do you got? Dial him up and play. <laughs> well, if you see him in man to man, you know what I'm going to say. It's either going to be a flat pass or just go deep. In your book there, Paul, somewhere should be a, a drawing of the play you drew up. What Remember? six wide play? <laughs> he had the guard in between, or the the quarterback was in between the guard and the tackle. I don't know how that happened. like in between them. I don't know who was snapping the ball or where it was going. Same way. Why are you running? I don't, I don't the know. The quarterback. I just, I just uh, told the whole lot of receivers, just line them all up on the field, and just go down the field. Everybody, they throw it. It was five wide with no running backs, and the quarterback was under center. Or under guard, or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, and then we called it six wide because they said I'd be running behind the fence. He'd be, uh, he'd uh, be uh, freaking down the sideline with him, like always ringing that cowbell. Uh, so, or his bullhorn, as he calls uh, it. So he, uh, he don't like watching them from the stands. I don't either. I don't blame him. I'd rather be in the press box calling plays too. So I, uh, we tried yeah. to get you on Pat's show last week when they had they were a man down, but it just didn't uh, happen. So the next question is, what do we need to do to be successful Friday night and beat this team, in your opinion? Well, uh, we got a big game Friday night. It's for, you know, a region championship. And first of all, we got to block and tackle well. They got some, some athletic backs, and we got to do a good job when they get it to tackle. You know, Coach Willis, you said we got to hem them up and don't let them get gone, because once they get gone, we ain't going to nobody catch them, I don't think. So right. we got to tackle well and, and, and get them before they get started, and we got to block. I mean, if we're going to throw the football or run it, we got to block them. And me and you were talking earlier, they got a nose guard that's uh, he's, he's a SEC player, and uh, we're, going to have, we're going to have to do a good job with it. And, and you'd even double him if you was uh, offensive line coach. You'd double the kid, wouldn't you? Well, you remember the old saying? 
two men ought to be able to whip one any day. Two ought to whip one. That's what I used to tell everybody. That's right. That's right. So, no matter how big or bad he is, we're gonna whip him. That's two right. Days, right. Yeah. So yeah, I think we we're going, there's gonna be some times we'll have to single block him, but there's gonna be a lot more times where we're gonna have two people blocking him. We got to. I mean, he's pretty good. I, you know, I like running year, right at him, challenging. Yeah, see how tough. So you he see is. how tough he really Check is right off the bat. Right off the bat. That's right. Just, Test his metal. That's that's my old theory. Paul, you got any more questions or? Yeah, there's still three more. <laughs> oh no! The, the, ne the next and, the next and the viewers want to know is uh, some stories when you played. Tell tell us some of your stories. Well, they can't all, tell them stories. I've heard a couple. They're all in black and white, Paul. It's been so long ago they weren't even colored yet. Yeah, but you can still tell us a few. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He ain't gonna quit. Then you tell him a story from what, uh, 80, 88, 87, 88. Yeah, I played. I played from 80, I, I was a freshman, I was an eighth grader when they won the championship in 84. So my next year, my freshman year, and I'll say this, 1984 was a great year for going to football because we went 14-0 uh, and won the state championship and our junior high team went 7-0 when I was on and uh, won a big bowl game against White House down there. So we won 21 or 22 football games that year and, and didn't lose any. So that was a good year. And you know, we, uh, my freshman year, we, I, I can't remember records, but we, we went to a bowl game and played, uh, hmm, I can't even remember, it might have been National Christian. Uh, and played them in the Bell Buckle Bowl down in uh, Cascade. Cascade. I think that's where we was at. And then my sophomore year, uh, we had a pretty good team. You know, it's when Shane Baden and Ken Blackburn and Gary Glover and some of those guys were senior. Terry was uh, uh, Bob Dillard on your team? Bob was a f senior when I was in eighth grade. He was on that 84 team. 84 so. team. Yeah. So who was quarterback in y'all's years? Uh, Ken Blackburn, my sophomore year. Uh, I think Chad Underwood was my freshman year. And then my junior year, we had a pretty good team. Uh, we went to the semifinals that year and got beat by Greenback up there, and we should have beat them. And they went on and won the championship pretty easily. So I think I remember that game as a kid. Did we score on the first play? Very first play. Run out of his shoe. Jamie Angel took the first play 80 yards. And I've always heard it's bad luck to walk with one shoe on and one shoe off. And it turned out to be. <laughs> it turned luck. out to be bad luck. This was at green back. Jamie scored real early, and then it turned around to end. Yeah, we, we, didn't, we threw, I don't know, three or four interceptions, had a couple of fumbles. We did should you, we should have won. Did you and play under Tony Ford any? No, I never got the opportunity to play. Who coached when you played? Um, uh, coach Winfrey was coach my freshman sophomore year, and then Coach Condit was my junior senior year. Uh, which year did we play Chattanooga High? That, that was my senior. Year. That was your senior. Year. I remember that game too. Did they win? I got a good memory, Paul. They win. Yeah. We won eight. Was it eight to three? Yeah, eight to three. Eight to three. Like that. I just uh, remember we got there. the opening kickoff. We got there real early because the time changed. We didn't take account for that because we thought it was in central time. It was really it what it was. But uh, they had a lot of athletes on that team. And, you know, they we did. were fortunate to beat them. I think we might have overlooked them a little bit. And uh, uh, but it was an intimidating place to play. And, right off the interstate. Yeah, middle of the project. Not in a good time. I, mean, it wasn't good. I, I think I think on the was it the first kickoff we weren't even ready to get the kick, right? Or was that after half? I think it was after half. After half. And we were still on the sideline. They kicked, kicked the it. ball off, and it's a foot race to the football. They weren't even on the field yet. Our they team wasn't on the field. We was in yet. the huddle, and Gary, uh, Greg Glover. Did y'all still recover it, even though uh, you weren't even on the field yet? Greg Glover yeah. went and got on. It. He did. One guy, like, one guy got to be alert at all times. Yeah. <laughs> well, Greg right. was pretty alert. He was alert. Ready then my win. senior year, we went to the semifinals again and got beat by DCA. And we should have beat them, too. Scooter Edwards. Scooter Edwards. He was a head He's got player. some highlights on YouTube, Paul. You should go check it out. Yeah. He, uh, a couple of them have a the turning point field. <laughs> yeah, we used, to, we used to own Hartsford. <laughs> My junior year was 50 to nothing, and my senior year was 38 to six. And, you know, you bring up Hartsford, they had DCA beat in the quarterfinals, and we had just manhandled Hartsford, so we got, you know, it, it's 
Looking back on it, it's sad to think that you uh, give one away, but we really give two away during that time yeah. period that we should have won. I always claim that some of the best teams was in the late 80s. Was Just Nashville one. Christian not all that good back in, or, or what? Well, we played them in you know, my, my junior year. I think, Russ, you said y'all seen the West of Fem. It was 40 to nothing, maybe. 42 to nothing. And then my I senior wouldn't. year was like 20 to 6. They got they were better, but they weren't. No. We played them since I've been coaching a few times, and they weren't near as good as they've been in the last few years. Yeah. It's like Harsh, they didn't start coming around to the mid 90s. Yeah. And when they came around, they came around. Yeah, came around. Uh, <laughs> 97, 98, you, they were untouchable. Yeah. Probably as good a single A teams I've ever seen. Was see, yeah. 98. They, they were Would you run some screens on these guys to try to get a, get away from them guys that are quick? Maybe some outside screens. Well, if you if you can't block them, you either got to read them or screen them. One of the two. So that's that's all I'm saying. So yeah. Well, the little middle screen that we like to run work on them. Yeah, I think so. You know, they they get a lot of pressure, and uh, their nose guard is a he's a legit player but he gets a lot of he's an upfield player so you know. so if they're coming the screen's gonna work can't it you should yeah, you and should that should back them up a little bit and, and take some of the pressure away if we hit a few plays on them right slow them down a little yeah, yeah. but well, if we want to run the ball we've got to throw it a little bit just loosen up that line and get some guys out of the box don't we well you know i think uh <laughs> from what I, i've talked to coaches this week maybe they've worked on some of the the passing game a little more because they realize we're going we can't run it 40 times you know, we got to throw it some in you know, the strength of our team so far this year has been run it has been uh, our offensive line and you know braxton gibbons is as tough a kid as there is i mean he runs it up in there and he makes something happen a lot of times when ain't a lot there but he yeah. does a good job and you know he's been a, a big part of the reason why we've won these last what five games in a row yeah I'm yeah. reeling them all uh, I said earlier, what do we, what I say, our run, run to pass ratio 75 was 75 to 25 percent, percent. Yeah. and uh, I think National Christians was about 50 50. Is that what I said? You said about 52 48. 52 48. Dog trying to get in, Paul. Your buddy's back. Uh, He'll open that door in a minute. <laughs> well, be ready, Paul. Do you like your principal job? Oh, I got a great job. I enjoy it. And, uh, I get to go to school every day and. and, and Tell people hello and good morning, and, and you know we got 490 kids at Gornfield Elementary, and they are they're great to be around. How many was it you said uh, that uh, Uncle BS said uh, Nashville Christian had on their enrollment? I'll have to get my phone, but uh, so you said we got 490, and I think they had somewhere near that. Close too. to 500 in the whole school, yeah. K through 12. Yeah. Is that what our numbers is for the whole school? No, or that's just, just K it? through six. Well, then we got them. Uh, what we got in the whole school? Maybe eight hundred and something. Well, we got three. I looked at the numbers today because reclassification's coming up, and we're about three thirty in the high school level. In the high school. That's just nine through twelve. Yeah. So you got another hundred roughly in junior high. So K through twelve. See four thirty and about four now. 490 is about 920 or so. Yeah. In the high school. You just yeah. pay attention in math class. Paul, yeah. Paul can add. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. The, funny, the funniest story I got on Paul this year, we was watching, uh, we're on our way to Joe Burns, and the GPS says uh, we're going to arrive at 6. Actually, it said 523. So we stop at Hooters, like, man, we got plenty of time. So we're on our way up, and it says we're going to arrive at 623, which means we spent an hour at Hooters. Well, I got a buddy that lives in Greenbrier, and we stop, and we're going to pick him up and take him to the game with us. So then it changes to 6.54. A few more minutes, it goes by, and it goes to 6.59, and Paul is stressing in the back seat. <laughs> He'd sit back there and relax the whole time. And just, he, he, he was he leaning back. Off, didn't and we didn't. We at 7.01. Off. We done we, missed the kickoff. <laughs> at 7.01, we rolled into the parking lot, and Paul don't know which way to go. Do I go this way or that way? I'm sure they'll both lead to the back of the building, well, Paul. We were kind of in a similar situation. Uh, Brad Sykes and, and Coach Petty was going to ride with us. Well, we went and picked him up, and, and Brad Sykes was, was working in Hartsville area, so we picked him up in Hartsville and went down through that way. You know, it's probably a little further, maybe, but less traffic, yeah. we thought, so we, that's the way we went. And... Um, 
GPS was clocking us there at 7.05, you know, and Tracy, my wife, she don't have to be late for nothing, so she's like, we got to go, we got to go, and uh, luckily we didn't get a speeding ticket on the way, because I think she went a little faster than she should have been. But Driving she made it a little look. quicker at 7.05. We got there at like 6.56, so we got there before you. I seen the kickoff. Yeah. But oh, Paul was sprinting through the gate. Yeah. I seen him come in. <laughs> he was wide open. If I could get him running like that in 2001, we'd have to something. He still thinks he can beat Jay Baden in a race with a 20-yard no, head that. start. How that. many How many yards would you need, Paul? Uh, could you beat him if you started at the 10-yard line and he started at the 40? Could you beat him in the goal line? Well, definitely, if, if that was the case. <clears throat> we'll try that out. I'm going to get him one day, and we're going we're gonna to have this race. And see, see the, the rules was that I understood was uh, uh, you had to be a senior or a coach to bust the sign, but I, here I was, junior, just busted it, didn't even care. It didn't uh, matter to you, did it? No. Oh, rebel. <laughs> rebel. Break, break rebel the calls. <laughs> break. I, I, asked him, you, I was going to go out there and get that moment one way or another. <laughs> <laughs> I asked him earlier, he's got Southern Illinois on his shirt, and I asked him where Southern, Southern Illinois I told University him, I, said, I don't know, it's just a shirt. <laughs> he don't know, I thought he was probably in Southern Illinois. Uh, I guess it's a good guess. Well, well do, you, do you miss calling plays? Um, no, not really. I, I, That's got to be one of the hardest jobs. It's tough. It really is because you take a lot of you take a lot of stress from the fans and everything. When something goes wrong, they're like, "You get the main blame, don't you?" Because you called the play. Well, when you uh, you know when you got twenty five seconds to call a play, thirty whatever it is in high school football, yeah, you know you, you're constantly trying to think ahead the whole time, and, and that's something that you know, I, I thought as the years went by. I tried to think. I hoped I got a little better at it, but I don't know that I did. But you also got to look at the strength of your team. What do you do well? What's the defense not defend well? So it may be. So your film study has to be dead on uh, during the week, so you know what to call. Sure. You know, and, and you get to the point where you go into a game and you got your five or six plays that you really feel like are your core plays that you work. You really rep them all week, and, and then you got. Me and Coach Miller used to call them bullets. You got a few bullets in the gun you want to shoot here or there just to, you know. A few trick plays you up your sleeve. Well, we don't like to call them trick plays. Maybe gadgets, you know, something that you don't do all the time. And you'd always practice them on Thursday and walk through. It might be a reverse or, a, you know, a throwback pass. and, and yeah. Or it could be something like Tennessee ran where you, where you toss it to the running back, he brings the receiver in motion, and then he tosses it over to the quarterback in the end zone. You know, it's, it's always a fine line about when to call that play and not to. You know, it's, that was one thing I would – because you, you felt like through your film study you had a play that was going to work, okay? And, and, and it may not be a gadget play. It may be a fake off of a jet sweep that you're going to try to hit them on a specific route because the safety's coming down quick. Or it might just be, you know, a reverse pass. But when was the best time to call that play? Well, when you're behind, naturally. You, know, <laughs> you think, I, I, don't to, I don't have to come or something because I'm stopping my run. Well, that's you, a good strategy, Paul. You can't, uh, you can't For the game tower, that's the time to bring it out. You can't get it all the same <laughs> on one play now. See, football is a game of four quarters. You it watch is. Tennessee Balls play? Yeah. They, they, Did you see the play they pulled on Texas A&M where he pitched it to the tailback and here comes this guy in motion he gives it to him and he just tosses it up to the quarterback for the end zone? You think we ought to run that right now? Uh, well, well I, I think we ought to get in the Wildcat just a little bit with Faye, or Jay, I mean, and then put uh, Braxton back there behind him. And then, hey, uh, I don't know what – well, we got uh, we got a – I don't know about asking if he can throw the ball or not, but we could motion. We could do that play like like he doing, just send Jay out there and let him come down the line and pat, pat his guys and just walk out to the line, then uh, bring it to ask you, let him just throw it over the top. Yeah, that's a good strategy. Yeah. I remember a bullet play we had dialed up in the state championship game and probably practiced it a couple times and missed it. The double pass. Remember when he tried to hit uh, – of course, Nick we can snap it to Braxton and, and pretend like he's going to run it. So your bullet play, if it if you don't execute, it could come back to haunt you. You know, and sometimes and people always, you know, you, you try to th – I never wanted to run a play in a game that we didn't run five or ten times in practice. You know, whether it be on Monday or on <clears throat> Thursday in shorts, everything you did, you wanted to make sure you had all your – 
your eyes dotted, your T's crossed, and everything was right. You know. Speaking of a gadget play, I remember we just out Baxter one year, and uh, of course we had this play where we brought Thomas Wright and tied in around in motion. Of course he could throw the ball uh, in dodgeball like no, no <laughs> other anyway. And it we brought Thomas him. around in motion, give him the ball, and then he just fires the ball down the field to Walker Woods, and, and then we had that drawn up perfect, then Walker dropped the football. <laughs> that stuff happened. That's why you're... They never, they never seen it coming. Your bullet's got to be loaded, and it can't be loaded with yeah. you know, and, and I remember that play very well. Thomas threw that ball about 60 yards, if I remember right. Damn. Yeah, it was about the 40 yard line. I he think they beat us like 14 to 8 or something, something or other. We've had some. Speaking of some bullets, Coach Williams must own the single shot because we used to run the same play. And if we didn't do it right, we run it again. Rusty, tell us about some of y'all's the bullet six, plays. That, the uh, red six was the only bullet we had. Well, what the red six were? <laughs> we run it until we got it right. How did it I work? We run it 20 something times one night. How'd it work though, Rusty? It, Tell us about it. Didn't it didn't work or we wouldn't have been running it all that time. <laughs> it either worked or it didn't, you know. But what was Red Six? How'd it go? It was just an off tackle play. You guard pulled, kicked in. Fullback yeah. led up in there. That's right. That's about yeah. what was running double wing, wasn't it? Yeah. That'd be Leslie Woodard playing fullback. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when it didn't work, it didn't work and we run it till it did. I think when our guard finally did get a block, we got some good yards and that was the last time we called that play. But the old strategy you run, run the same right. play two or three times if it was working in a row. What I'm saying is run it till they stop run it. Run it till they stop it. So you yeah. ain't got no reason to change it up if it's working, do yeah. you? Yeah. That's a pretty good plan. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Paul, is that all your questions? That's all I had wrote down. You got any? I, your questions were as good as mine, as good as I could have wrote down. You got anything you want to tell the, <laughs> tell the kids about Friday night? Uh, tell the coaches. Well, yeah, it's been a long time since we played in the game for the district championship. This is a big one, you know. And, right. I, and I, I told you earlier, you want to be fired up Friday night. You know? Yeah. Uh, you think we'll have that train horn up there? We need it. I think we'll have it. We need that. We need the cowbells. We need the shakers. And we need a bunch of hoop and holler fans. So we need to rock the jungle, that's what we used to call it, right? Yeah. So everybody bring your jugs out. And I even heard Thomas Wright uh, say he was going to be there, so and that'd be the first time I've seen him in 20 years. Thomas Wright. I seen him, he was at a junior youth league football game back there with his little nephew or cousin something like that. Maybe we even get old Ryan George to come back. I ain't seen him in years either. He's up there all the time, Paul. Well, maybe, I, maybe he just Ryan's ain't, on the he, hill he just ain't nowhere near me. He just ain't looking. Every Monday and Thursday night, he's at City Park because his boy plays football out there. Right by your house. You can just yeah. walk right down there and see. Uh, Might even let you help coach. You go down there and you dial up a play. Yeah. Might let you get a pretty game speech. There you there. go. Do you, uh, you, have to, you pretty well have to be a teacher just to coach anymore, don't you? Well, they, you yeah. take Sunday school, Paul. Yeah. You can, you can get in there and coach. You can't just we had, no, we ain't had no Bible verses now, have we? Well, well, he opened up with you can't get in there and just, just coach voluntarily without without being a teacher, can you? You can, but there's a process you got to go through to do it. you got to pass uh, all these tests, and your fingerprints, you got all that. You ain't got no felony. No, mine are already on file over at the county. <laughs> get them. You know, I, I tell everybody when Pat needs to get done, uh, call it a, uh, when they get done with their careers, uh, me and Rusty might be next in line to call the game. I'm telling you, it sounds like good fire, man. Yeah. Y'all do a good job with this in the home. Yeah. yeah. We got good production back on the area. Yeah. With the dogs barking in the background. You yeah. It don't, it don't cost much to come over here, does it? No. It's it's pizza. Hamburgers, spaghetti, yeah. anything. You know, he don't charge me for labor. <laughs> Nothing like that. So, he's, so like he said, big game Friday night, region championship on the line. Go get the popcorn from the popcorn vendor. Eat it up. It's going to be a show. Bring you popcorn. It's going to be a show. Well, Paul, before you go, we're going to give uh, Coach Clemens here the 3 of 50 autographed Paul Martin card for being a good guest on Did the show. Did you say you, was, uh, you also want to yeah. present him with a flag? We got him with uh, his wife like this. It's a Gonzo car flag. Got the we got the big G on it. Maybe Tracy will you. enjoy that. Well, uh, we enjoyed it. Thank Paul, you one me. more thing, you didn't get his score prediction. All right, yeah. Most coaches score prediction. All of us 
Steve Irwin predicts. He can't oh, fight what, you. what do you predict it to be? Um, I'm going to say, look, oh, before we go, let's talk about this field goal we kicked. Uh, what do you think about that? Uh, elevation played a played a key role in that, and we had talked about that the week before. Said said uh, if it comes down to it, we we gonna kick that field goal. And, thirty-seven yarder, and it went thirty-seven yards. I don't know that it ain't the longest in history. No, I believe I believe Copper Basin. We kicked one longer at Copper Basin one year, maybe forty-two or something. But uh, I don't uh, know. But uh, nineteen eighty-three kicked one. As far as, as, far as uh, I don't know if it was that. I don't know if it was that far. Yeah, I, don't really, look I don't ever remember kicking one. When did he look at when did he call? Uh, Winfrey over it up. Scott Winfrey paper. knows. Uh, he would know it all. He knows. He's, he's the guru but, around uh, here. Yeah, if it comes down to it, four down. I've got a lot of faith in our kicker. Uh, keep kicking them field goals. Well, we're in lower elevation, so what's our range? Thirty. Uh, I would say thirty to thirty. 30 yards would be comfortable. Like if you're around the 17 to maybe the 12, kick it if, it, if you need to. We get up at thin down. air up East Tennessee, it goes About hard. 30 to 32 yards would be my comfort level. And then after that, uh, just throw it in and so I'll take a chance. There we go. That's a good, that's a good uh, strategy. Well. Uh, and depending on the defense, because they've been playing pretty good. But, hey, our defense has been playing good. But they got to tackle, though, because – if that 11 gets in space, man, that kid's got more moves than the Pilbury, Pilbury old boy. <laughs> <laughs> when he jiggles. You think he can tackle him out of the field? No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if me and you and Rusty can all tackle him in this room. What do you think? No. We couldn't stay in our lanes and tackle him, no problem. No, but uh, I don't know much about the return. Well, I guess 11 is the return man in the year. I've seen him return one on Monterey, so the guy's got pretty good moves. Yeah. Of course, uh, Ryan George, man, that, that man, uh, I think he took five kicks back for touchdowns that one year. He was a special player. He can run. He can run. We only returned one the whole time I was in high school. That yeah, may be the record part. for the most kick returns of the year. His five. I'd say it probably is. I don't remember ever returning any more. Well, Paul, the dogs are barking. Time to end the show. Have you got any closing lines? Go Thanks. Big Blue. <laughs> All right. Are you see you there? Yeah. All right. I'll be looking for you. All right. You're going to be on the